Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Feats of Strength. Guys have found me in the middle of Portland's Snowpocalypse 2021. One of the things about ice storms and snowstorms is it sure makes it easy to put off important tasks. This week's project is definitely something I've been putting off for a while. I've been putting off making a frame building jig for over five years now. I started it. I never finished it. Maybe it was just building normal bikes seemed pretty boring to me, but we're going to see if we can get it all wrapped up this week. So might as well head out into the snow and get started in the shop. Okay, here's what I started so many years ago. This is a simple frame made out of two inch by one inch steel C-channel. The whole idea is if you lay it on a nice flat surface, it should keep everything in alignment, keep everything flat. I need to expand some of the mounting slots. I've got a rear dummy axle mounted up here in the back. This is one part that I am actually pretty pleased with. I don't have a machine shop, I don't have a lathe, so I couldn't afford to get these custom machined, but I found a good solution. You'll see I used some of the additional C-channel, welded on a piece of angle iron, and the conical bit itself is actually a little brass bell from Goodwill. Simple little bell, shoot, it even has some of the price tag from Goodwill still on it. In order to make sure that I get everything set up, I have this old blown out track frame that I've been hanging on to for a long time. I had it for a number of years, sold it to a friend of mine. He wrote it a bunch, cracked the down tube at the bottom bracket shell a couple of times, repaired them a couple of times. It's been through a couple of layers of paint jobs and other colors and well, ultimately it died when we had to surgically remove the seat post from the frame but otherwise it was a really fun frame, really cool geometry. I'm just gonna use this as a baseline to see if we can get the rest of this jig working. One of the things that's really annoyed me about this jig is that I have to fit a wrench up into the inside to tighten and loosen any of the bolts. So I'm just gonna come up with a little system here to see if I can do away with needing a wrench on the underside of the bolts so I can tighten everything with just one hand. So a little bit of rod stock here welded to the bolt head should keep them from rotating inside the frame. All right, let's try it out, see if it works. Yeah, look at that. Here's how those pieces work to hold all the tubes in place. Now I need to figure out the height of the bottom bracket shell. This is going to be a 68 millimeter bottom bracket and all of the other tubing holders have a standoff from the frame of about 53 millimeters. So I just need to come up with something that's going to hold at the same height. I'm going to use this other bell for bottom bracket shell, cut that to the right height, just promptly drop it on the ground. Great. Put a notch in this little spacer so it will fit over the bolt that's going to clamp the bottom bracket shell in place.
Now to deal with the dropouts. This is a track frame and already I can tell that I might have some problems when I switch to something with wider spacing on the dropouts like a mountain bike frame or a road bike. We're gonna have to cross that bridge when we come to it. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a piece of tubing here that will be my spacing guide. I'm actually gonna go just a touch longer than 120 mil. I feel like most frames tend to warp inwards after the heat of the welding. So it's okay if I oversize this just slightly. Don't forget, measure once, cut once, measure again, or something. Anyway, got my piece here, put a little label on it so I don't think it's a scrap piece of tubing. One more thing I need to address is a way to clamp these other pieces of channel down to the top of the jig. So I'm gonna cut a few more slots here that I can bolt into. can see already that this is probably going to be a problem. I suppose the smart thing to do would be to put some tabs lower down on this piece of C-channel, but you know what? It's fine for now. I'm going to double check with an angle gauge. It measures about 74 degrees, which I suppose is probably pretty realistic for a track frame. I don't know the exact geometry of this frame, but it seems close enough. So there you have it. Everything seems to line up and keep it all straight. I suppose the next thing I need to do is build myself a real bike frame. So I've been sitting on a little tube set over here for about five years as well. It's the tubing I need to replicate this old frame and bring it back to life. You're gonna have to wait for a future episode to see all of that happen. In the meantime, I'm gonna crack open a lemon squash and enjoy my hard work. Finally have a usable frame building jig. See you guys next time.